doesn't include all Americans. The, the had his these substance you probably and people. So were approved by the federal government. Forrest and Irwin quit and experienced this government approved racist policy firsthand when they went looking for a home in Levittown in the 1960s. The guy said, you know what you get your out of here because we don't sell the Established 1947, but how Levittown was established has an effect on American culture today, not just in Levittown, but nationwide. William Levitt built the first mass-produced suburb in the country. And what happened in this 17,000 home development set the standard for thousands of communities coast to coast. The only way that Levitt could build that subdivision was by going to the Federal Housing Administration and the Veterans Administration, getting a bank guarantee for the loans to buy the land and build the homes. But the banks blocked out in red on maps neighborhoods that had even one black person living there and <laughs> refused to make loans there. It's why Levitt had no black buyers at all. Mm. Oh, so my Fred goodness. Ellen was showing the house. So my husband said to him, my wife is interested in, you know, purchasing a home here in Levittown. Get your... Richard Rothstein is one of the foremost researchers on housing discrimination in the U.S. The federal government even required Levitt to place a clause in each and every home in Levitt town, prohibiting resale to African Americans or rental to African Americans. Those deeds are still in the homes today. They can't be removed. They're no longer enforceable, but they, they not permit the premises to be used or occupied by any person other than members of the Caucasian race. Louise Cassano has lived in Levittown since her parents brought her here in 1951, and she and her husband bought their home here 13 years later. I don't doubt that a number of people bought into the community for the reason uh, that it was Caucasian only. I have never heard of any incidents in this community where people of color have been abused in any way. But there may be a reason for that. Even today, just over 1% of Levittown residents are black, just under 84% are white. That's the problem with discrimination and racism. It carries forward. When Levitt built his homes, there was no down payment for veterans, and for anyone else, it was $10. That's just $120 today, adjusted for inflation. And the homes cost about $8,000, the equivalent of $96,000 of today's dollars, prices black families could afford. But now, the value of a Levitt town home? $500,000, perhaps. The white families gained the equity Housing advocate Ian Wilder says that created a huge divide of wealth. Which could be used to put children through school, which means through, through college, which means those children have a shot at a better paying job. The families that couldn't buy here lost $400,000 worth of equity. That segregation, enforced by the government and kept in place to this day, means that most whites have lived separately from blacks for generations. Now, there were a few exceptions in the years after World War II. Well, sort of. Madeline Quintine shows us the clippings about her dad, a community leader. He was the man run out of Levittown nearly 60 years ago. My father was about home ownership. Erwin Quintine was finally able to buy a home here in Ronak Park. The North Amityville subdivision, four miles from Levittown, advertise that all men are created equal. It's basically where African Americans live. And while they did build up equity, it was separate and unequal. North Amityville is now 92% black or Latino and has a median income of about $73,500. That's 62 cents for each dollar Levittowners earn. So the housing discrimination that started 70 years ago in Levittown and spread nationwide created the wealth gap for African-American families today. Only in America. That's all I can tell you. Only in America would this happen, I guess. Now, this historical segregation plays out in even more ways involving housing.
else and get this a pair of detailed studies recently showed that nationwide black owned homes are much higher property taxes than those owned by whites but black owned homes are typically valued a lot lower than white owned homes sometimes when they're right next door to each other how to fight this double whammy discrimination experts say to hit the discriminatory system in the pocketbook that's stirring some controversy that we'll talk about in part two of this series airing tomorrow Lot more to talk about oh yes there is and for more stories like this go to our website pix11.com slash created equal uh governor Cuomo uh in the news is launching an investigation into a, fe a confederate flag that was spotted on a fire truck on long island yeah this uh picture of the banner on a brookhaven ladder truck sparked a lot of outrage it was posted on social media yesterday the town's fire officials condemned the display they said the incident involved a single firefighter and was done without the knowledge of department leadership and tonight governor cuomo called the display appalling and said he is directing the state's division of human rights to look into that situation. Well, the high-tech plan for ensuring